Now, a quick thing beforehand, this is the reason reviews have been a little slow lately. I've been working on this Mass Effect Andromeda review for ages. I, the game is pretty damn long. Um, and I did all the loyalty missions and extras. Now, quick thing, reviews also will take a lot longer to come out because I'm working on the fun review season 3 story right now. Um, I've got a lot of the shots done. I just need to edit them, set them up and add in effects in Adobe After Effects. Um, now, on to the review of Mass Effect Andromeda. Yes! Finally! After five years of waiting! Hello, everybody, for reviews here, and today I'll be reviewing the long anticipated sequel to Mass Effect 3, Mass Effect Andromeda. Now, as much as I want to jump right into the thick of this review with the story, we need to address the controversy surrounding Mass Effect Andromeda's release. Yes, the game is glitchy. Yes, it's been five years and it's using the Frostbite engine, which might I add, Mass Effect games have never looked all that visually impressive. impressive. And this is really stepping out of Bioware's comfort zone. I know they're used to creating open worlds, but this is an open galaxy. See, every planet, hub planet, is its own open world to explore, with Vault, Remnant, and Ket scattered all over the place. So, despite this game's apparent desperate attempts to make me dislike it, I still love it. So now, on to the story. Mass Effect Andromeda is a phenomenal game. Everything is spot on in terms of story. It hits every note it needs to hit. Story, characters, overall arcing plot, complicated decisions to make, they all couple together to create a fantastic story. But what is that story? So our story takes place nearly 640 years after the events of Mass Effect 3. The Arc Hyperion, which is the first time we see it, Arc Hyperion, who is carrying over 2,500 humans, has just arrived in the Andromeda Galaxy. And Ryder, Deep Scott breath. Ryder, I use the default yeah, Scott Ryder, wakes up from cryosleep. Along, and the first Ryder, Scott, face we meet is Lexa, who is the doctor for Arc Hyperia, but for some reason is an Asari. We've also got Sarah Ryder and Ryder Senior. Now, Ryder Senior is the human pathfinder. So, what are pathfinders, I hear you say? This game is not... this. Expedition is not run by the Systems Alliance. It is run by something called the Andromeda Initiative. And Pathfinders are designed to inspect and search out golden worlds to, for humanity to thrive. Um, so, there are four arcs. Arc Hyperion, which is the human arc. Arc Niranus, I think it is, which is the Turian arc. And then there's the Asari and Salarian arcs. Now, Arc Hyperion makes it to its golden world, and so does Arc Natanus and the other two arcs. They all make it to their golden world. But unfortunately, none of them pan out. They're all a bust. Makes it sound so bust. And Scott it, and um, Ryder's dad is killed in looking at Habitat 7, which is supposed to be the human golden world. It is there that we discover the monoliths and the cat. Now, the cat are these very hostile alien life forms. Now, before I get any further, all this was previously revealed in the trailer. I hope not. This, I I'm jumping into spoiler territory here. Well, buckle up. Now, the Ket are these hostile alien life forms who attack on sight and care zero for human life. Scott's dad is killed and Scott Ryder is placed as the Pathfinder. And given the and Arc Hyperion makes it to the Nexus, but unfortunately Arc Natanus, the Salarian and Asari Arcs do not make it to the Nexus. Now, the Nexus is this massive space station like the Citadel from Mass Effect 1 through 3. Yes, um, but everything is seemingly going according to plan, except we are, and we are given our ship, the Tempest. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I'm very partial to the Normandy SR2 for Mass Effect 2 and 3. But and I thought that the Tempest would never be able to match up. It does. It matches up to my expectations and surpasses them. So our story is, we take the Tempest along with our crew of misfits to search out a golden world for humanity, stop the cat, a cat and make friends in Andromeda, like the Angara. So, 
That's enough for the story. Let's move on to the presentation. So the presentation. As I said, Mass Effect Andromeda and all the Mass Effect games have never been the sharpest looking games. But Mass Effect Andromeda still looks breathtaking in its visual style. Everything about it screams originality. Something that rarely ever happens in games these days. Which Bioware has always been pioneers in originality in video games. And that can ne never be true said for Mass Effect Andromeda. Everything in the game looks beautiful and the best thing about it is the fact that anything in the trailer you see in the game. For example, spoilers here. Whilst I was searching for the Salarian Arc, I was really hoping I'd encounter a scene from the trailer where the Tempest flies above our heroes and starts firing. That exact thing happened when I recovered the Salarian Arc. The same thing when Arc Hyperion crashes, but more on that in the final level. But overall, everything about Mass Effect Andromeda screams originality and beauty. From the world's different styles, like Eos is so different from, her I can't even pronounce it, Aya. Aya. And all the vaults, which are these places where remnants sort of store data and stuff, they all are amazing. Even the remnant and the cat all look amazing in their visual style. I'm so glad that Bioware chose to take this direction with Mass Effect. And all the sea sea species that we do know are back and look and act amazing. And also look amazing, like the Asari, Salarians, Tyrians, and so many others. I just hope for Mass Effect Andromeda 2, we see the Quarians and others return. Now, once again, we've got to address the controversy. Yes, this game is very glitchy. I fell through the world a few times, and even one point, um, Jal, one of my Angaran, um, follower, squad mate, started floating in midair and refused to come down down after doing a vault quest, but it doesn't detract from the overall visual style of the game. But now, on to the gameplay. You have new so, the gameplay. The gameplay borrows a lot from the first two Mass Effect games, well, not really borrows, but adapts. Now, as Shepard couldn't jump over anything unless there was a button prompt, Scott Ryder and Sarah Ryder are a lot more versatile as characters. They're a lot more nimble. You have now have the jump pack, which enables you to traverse a lot of areas as well as evade enemy bullets. Now we've also got three other types of weaponry. You've got Milky Way weaponry, which is the stuff we're used to. Remnant weaponry, which is plasma based. And Helios weaponry, which has heat seeking. But also, a lot's changed too. We now have more. The loyalty missions are back, as well as the romance paths are back. Ugh, about censor, censor that, censor that. Our bodies and minds weave together. Like I, like you see there, the romance paths are back, and I chose PB. I've never trusted anyone. Um, but a lot of, but unlike the. First two Mass Effect games, when once you selected a class that was permanent, Mass Effect Andromeda is a m much more versatile game. You can change between classes on a dime, between Soldier, Engineer, Adept, Vanguard, and the new class Explorer, which I s chose to play through. Also, the character creator and customizers back. You can also customize your armor sets and weapon loadouts, as well as being able to select upgrades from all three classes. We also have new compa new squad mates, like I said, PB, Cora, Jarl, Liam, Liam, and I think I've got them all there. Um, we also have the Tempest, which is our new ship to explore Andromeda. It's much more advanced than the Normandy, but much smaller. You have eight smaller, eight having eight. only two decks instead of five. Um, it also has advanced. Well, capabilities, including a very, 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 very beautiful bridge. Oh, yeah, and Vastra, Arteria. Um, as well, and, um, it does overall have a very unique feel to it. Um, we also have the multiplayer from Aspect 3 back, is back, but it, it's just a tax on addition, to be honest. To be honest, but let's talk about the multiplayer briefly. 
I personally feel that the multiplayer is tacked on, as in it didn't need to be there. If it had, if they had have left it out, it would have been a much, much more valuable single player experience because Mass Effect One and Two got on fine without multiplayer, but Three, well, was considered one of the worst. But now, the Nomads. <laughs> no, Mako, go get out of here. No, go away, Mako. No one likes you. No one likes you. Go. Go to the corner. Pathfinder's heart. No, I do not Good. Approve. Stay. So instead of the Mako, no. If there had been another option, I would have taken Instead of the Mako, we now have the Nomad, which is so much better. So, Sam killed you. Um it show it has uh, it's a lot more versatile and actually works. So instead of barely being able to set a pathway, you can now Traverse different environments with traction control, being able to scale cliffs, as well as jump and boost options. It, ha it really makes exploring the world of Andromeda much, 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 much more fun. Fun, but enough about the story. Let's, let's enough about the gameplay. Let's move on to the final level. So you've done it. You fought your way through countless members of the Archons. We find out that the cat are really just altered up. Um, the cat are really just altered Angarans who have been forced to become cat against their will. And it's up to you to find the arcs. So you found all the arcs. You found the Turian and Asari. You found the Turian and Asari arcs. It's time to find the Solarian arc. They, this is where we first meet the Archon in person. So, and he is a towering boss. He's n not really the Reapers, but he's a lot more personal villain. Because the Reapers were just these mindless killing machines, except for Sovereign, and we never really heard him speak, except for the Arrival DLC for Mass Effect 2. I've got it. But I the Archon is a lot, is a much more relatable villain, in a way. So, and we find out that all of the Remnant Vaults are connected through something called Meridian. Now, Meridian, we th now the Tempest crew thought the Meridian was the station which controlled all of the vaults, but it turned out to be this giant moon-sized sphere. But the Archon is smart and he finds out that there is only one other person who can interface with Remnant technology besides Scott. And that is his Sarah. And that is his sister, Sarah Ryder, who's just awoken from cryo after being stuck in there in an induced coma. But if we also find out that he takes Arc Hyperion, takes it to Meridian, and unfortunately, well actually this bitch bit is pretty damn awesome. Awesome. All, all of the friendships we have made throughout Mass Effect Andromeda, saving um, PB's friend, the Angaran Resistance, everyone from Andromeda, including the other Pathfinders, help in this fight against the Archon. And we win. We defeat the Archon, and we share a kiss with PB. Our character shares a kiss with PB. And it goes on to explore more of Andromeda. Andromeda. So, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Fun Reviews. I'm going to give Mass Effect Andromeda a, a 9 out of 10. I really want to give it a 10, but the tact on multiplying the glitches just held it back for me. I don't believe it's worthy of all the hate. Mass Effect Andromeda is a phenomenal game with phenomenal story, characters, presentation, gameplay, and final level. It is almost perfect on all accounts. The five years development time for Andromeda is so worth it. This game needs DLC now. Now. I cannot wait to continue exploring Andromeda, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Hey guys, thank you for watching this episode of Fun Reviews. If you like it, click to click over here to watch more videos, and be sure to subscribe and follow us on all on our social medias. Link are in this credit card. Or end credit card are in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye!